about six or seven months ago, I bought a planer, which is amazing. I used it in my pattern plywood project and in many projects ever since. But it is a 90 pound planer and when I bought it, I just put it on a dolly, which makes it really easy to move it around. But it also makes for really wonderful leg exercise and back exercise. I have been putting it off for long enough and finally it's time to give it a stand. Now on this planer stand, I wanna make sure I incorporate a few features. First off, it needs to be compact because like a lot of us, I have a really small shop. And in fact, I shuffle tools around all the time. I actually pull them out in the driveway to work. So it needs to be nice and compact and mobile uh, where I'm gonna make sure there's storage because you can never have enough storage. And then a few other features that are going to make it a lot easier and functional. So let's get building. The frame of the planer stand is built using 2x4 boards which I cut up on the miter saw. As always, I have the full detailed cut list, the step-by-step -step instructions and schematics available for you in a printable version and I will add a link to that in the description below. So now I have all my 2x4s cut out. I have the legs, the short aprons and the long aprons. Next up are the pocket holes. I used my Craig 720 to make pocket holes in all of the 2x4 aprons. If you are new to pocket holes or if you always wonder why your pocket holes never turn out the way they should, I have a complete step-by-step -step course that breaks it all down and ensures that you are successful with your pocket holes. And I will add a link to that below in the description. Next up is the plywood. The shelves are made using plywood and I'm using a circular saw to make the cuts. I used a straight edge guide, which is pretty straightforward to set up so that I can use that to guide my circular saw. It is very important to have a straight edge along which you can glide your circular saw to get the best accurate cuts. You can use a simple straight edge clamped to the board, which is what I did in the past, but ever since I've gotten the straight edge guide, it makes things so much faster and easier. Okay, now let's build. The first step is to build the base of the frame. And I went ahead and attached the long aprons to the legs using wood glue and two and a half inch pocket hole screws. Clamps are our best friends here to make sure that everything is aligned and at the right angles. And I built two of these, of course, for both sides of the stand. Now let's attach the short aprons, but the short aprons are actually going to be offset from the bottom by about an inch and a half. And I will tell you why I'm doing this in just a little bit, but I went ahead and made sure that everything was aligned, clamped it in place, and went ahead and added the pocket hole screws. Now this needs to be attached to the other side of the leg frame and it's always best to let gravity help you. So I used a few of the 2x4 aprons I had cut out and used them to support my frame while I screwed the short aprons into place. Now with that done, that is the start of the planar stand frame. Then I went ahead and measured and marked exactly where the next level of aprons was going to be and attached them using wood glue and pocket hole screws. And while I attach these, if you are enjoying this project and are not subscribed, please make sure to subscribe and follow along because I have a lot of fun projects coming up. And then it was time to attach the short aprons, which I went ahead and attached with wood glue and pocket hole screws, like all the other levels. But I messed up. As you can see, I actually offset these two by fours, but I didn't need to offset them. So I took them off and put them back where they were supposed to be, which was with their tops completely aligned with the rest of the aprons. 
Then I went ahead and made sure that my shelf fit properly. Then I went ahead and marked the cutouts for the 2x4s. And cut it out using my jigsaw. Then I went ahead and built the topmost level. Now not all of my 2x4s were exactly flat and straight because there was barely any choice at the store. And now I'm seeing a result of that. I had to force a few of these pieces into place using my mallet. But that's okay because now that everything is in place, everything is nice and square. Once the aprons were in place, I also went ahead and added an extra support in the middle because we are going to be supporting this heavy piece of equipment on it. Now let's build the drawers. I am using 3 quarter inch plywood to build these drawers. Of course you could use half inch plywood to build these, but I already had enough 3 quarter inch plywood. There are many different ways you can build drawers. I have recently started to use the inset base technique where you make the grooves on the table saw and then when you are putting it together you make sure that the grooves align and we use pocket holes on the outside to attach the boards together and build the three sides of the box. And then we just slide the quarter inch base into place and attach the fourth side using pocket holes. And that is the drawer box. Now let's attach the drawer slides to the frame. This is the reason I had offset the short apron on the bottom of the frame. So we have space to attach the drawer slides onto. I made sure to leave enough space for the drawer front and then went ahead and attached the slide to the frame using the screws that came with the drawer slides. Once the drawer slides were attached to the frame, I went ahead and set up the box in place and attached the slides to the box. Once I had a couple of screws attached, I could pull the box out and attach the remaining screws. And that is our drawer. It works perfectly. Now it's time for the drawer front. I started by making the holes for the hardware in the drawer front. Once I had those holes, I could use those holes and attach the front onto the drawer box using screws through those holes. Once the door front was in place, I can go in and add some countersunk screws from the inside to make sure that the door front is held in place. Once the door front is in place, I can remove the extra screws from the front, make the holes all the way through. I did have to make some extra countersunk holes on the back to accommodate the drawer bolt screws. And then I attach the pole onto the drawer. I took the drawer out because I wanted to attach casters into place and I attached four heavy duty locking casters on all the four corners of the stand. Now I went ahead and put the drawer in. I added the middle shelf in place. I added some countersunk screws from the top. Now you could screw in from the bottom, but this is just going to be in the workshop and a countersunk screw works well for me. Next comes the top and now it is time to attach the folding outfit table. I am using these folding table brackets which work beautifully. I just made sure that the outfit table would be level with the top of the planer stand and attached it in place. And that is the outfit table. I obviously needed some help to pick up that planer and put it onto the stand. This is also a good time to bolt the planer in place, which I admit I haven't done yet because I messed up the sizing and didn't get the right size bolts. But I will be doing that very soon. 
Okay, now one last thing. We're gonna be adding outfit rollers to the folding outfit table. I'm not going to go into a lot of details about that because I basically followed my friend Alicia from Pneumatic Addicts tutorial, and I will add a link to her video down below. It's essentially a bunch of towels and PVC pipes, and you just screw them all together, and I went ahead and built that and screwed it onto my outfit table. And that is it. The middle shelf is the perfect size to keep another small tool and the drawer is going to be the perfect size for me to store my hand planer and some extra blades and such. So that, my friends, is a planer stand which is super easy to move around and take it out as I need it. It's compact, it's mobile. The outfit table works wonderfully. And most importantly, I love the fact that it is at waist height. No more extra leg exercises or back exercises for me. Like I mentioned, I have the full cut list, step-by-step -step instructions and schematics available in a printable form for you to build your own planer stand. And I will add a link to that in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I am pretty sure you will also enjoy the table saw stand that I built along similar lines a few years ago. And here are a few other videos that you might like as well. Until next time, bye.